Welcome to Shepherd's Week in Review. On Monday, we showed you Ziska jewelry, handmade and adjustable pieces. Wardrobe Wednesday is about the trapeze tunic and the um, sleeveless teeth. And then Fashion Friday, where we're looking at designs created by women that make us all feel so fabulous in honor of International Women's Week. And on Sunday, have you met Marlene Shepherd? Marlene Shepherd shares her story on Coffee Talk. You won't want to miss it. Shop the collections right up here and enjoy the week. We're styling up our days and evenings with the lightest of ease with the help of the new trapeze, the trapeze tank and tunic, both new from Simply. So we're taking a breath of fresh air because spring is upon us. We've styled up looks for now and into spring. The trapeze tunic solid color works beautifully with printed pants like this one from Up, or you can take it to something special with the help of the wide leg trouser, also new this spring from Simply. So there's a purity of line in these pieces. Here, we've added the sleevey wonder to the sleeveless trapeze tank because again, we want to give you that option of the instant sleeve. We're really loving these soft colorations, but if you want to go bold, stay to your basic black. Sandra's in the trapeze tank here with the lantern pant in the painted lines print in black and white. So. Look at the wider leg uh, pant there. It's funky, it's fun. Again, everything is modern. You can tuck in your trapeze blouse on it a little bit to showcase that banded waist on the pant. And yeah, just love the fit on this. There's a relaxed ease to all of it. The jewelry is new in from Ziska, and we're loving these for the colorations. They're bright, and also the length is adjustable on the pendant. These colors are made specially for us. We select the colors. Here I am wearing the necklace in yellow, and I've added here the pleated dot skirt to the trapeze tank. We've showcased this skirt recently on Wardrobe Wednesday, and we like to extend our wardrobes, show you pieces that you can mix and match together so that you get up in the morning and you've got lots to select from. And the trapeze tank is one of those pieces, as is the tunic. So here's Sandra wearing the tunic along with the printed legging. This is a piece that retails for under $40. It's kind of a cotton base. It's a pull-on and it's a one size. And here she's wearing again a legging in a different coloration. So the trapeze, oh, here's a, a close-up. So you get to see that kind of softed print as well. Very sophisticated. That's how we wanted to keep it here in wearing these leggings with the, uh, the tunic. So more in the tunic, as you can see, it's that kind of soft bell, A-line shape. Again, it does have pockets, and it's a rounded bateau neckline, three-quarter length sleeve. It has an elongated body, 
so that it wears so well with a slim leg pant like this one from Lisette. This is called the Cobra Slim Pant and it has a metallic hue as does this silver melange color in the tunic coloration from Simply. Makes for a great silhouette worn together. Um, it really, really pretty for spring. Here's Nelly in again the same uh, tunic, the trapeze tunic in the lapis color. So ladies, if we don't have your size in this, don't worry. We can get these to you within a two to three week delivery period. Linda wearing the same tunic with the zest pant with the little zipper detail here on the side. So again, a relaxed bottom, but a semi-fitted top. Great silhouette. So we hope that you've enjoyed our focus today on the trapeze tank and the trapeze tunic both available in store and online, shepherdsfashions.com worldwide. Welcome to Shepherd's Fashion Friday. Today we're going to celebrate women because it's International Women's Week. Mm -hmm. And we're highlighting some lines that are designed by women. And uh, who does it better, right? Exactly. Makes us feel, feel so wonderful. So first, Eileen Fisher, New Spring Delivery, the hooded windbreaker in yarrow. Oh, I love Ooh. this color. You call it yellow, is it? Yarrow. La yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Really citrus, uh, mm -hmm. lemon yellow, and look at how you've combined it with this gorgeous royal blue. Eileen makes great basics that really fit the body. Uh, exactly. Wear the clothes that you wear now, not the ones that you wore, you know, 10 pounds ago or if you lose weight. Wear the Love clothes it. that feel good now. Great combination of color, of course, with denim. This always works. So here we're showing the crew neck pullover also in yarrow available in royal blue too oh i love the two Forgot colors it. of course yeah. royal is one of the most popular colors does mm -hmm. all the right things here so here is teresa we're back to that same crew neck showing it with that kind of black and white stripe and the pant here is the new pant on the scene from eileen fisher it's a pull-on wide leg pant 268 dollars good price point love it. it's got the pockets pull up uh, elastic waist mm -hmm. and now we've teamed it up with this great little pullover yes. and again the royal blue i like the three-quarter sleeve bateau neck uh, it's $160. Again, look, it hits just below the hip yes. bone, so wearable for all figure types. I, and I like you put Anne-Marie Chagnon necklace on it. Another woman, uh, a Canadian woman yes. uh, from Montreal that makes fabulous jewelry. Modern designs. Kathy D is wearing her necklace as well in this this dress we all love. This is the trapeze dress by Simply with a little sleeve. Uh, there's also a sleeveless version. Mm -hmm. Everything's going right here, right? She's mm -hmm. very petite, right? Just yes. just under five foot, like right below the knee. Now this is Compliqué, which is a Montreal designer. This has a lot going on to it. Really have to yes. look at the detail here. Black mm -hmm. on black, mesh sleeve, mesh insert, kind of a little bit of a sexiness, but a little avant-garde to $170. Again, you've put the Anne-Marie Chagnon with this. Yes. Could be beautiful with a legging, with a wide leg pant too, if you want to change up your LBD, but it's nice to see something going towards an evening look. You're right. It's a great little black dress for the spring and the summer season, or if you're mm -hmm. going down south. Oh. A shot of color. This yes. is by Gabby. Mm -hmm. Again, another Canadian line designed by women. Love the flow on here. Again, a little avant-garde with this popover yes. knit top with this window pane and it looks really interesting in the mustard it's 114 dollars imagine this with a tank and, an, and a and a jean but here's the dress here's what's underneath it again in the saffron color mm -hmm. lots of yellow this year right Elaine? yes it's, we're seeing it, it started last spring and it's really taken full force this this spring and summer so 179 dollars again now um, oh well, on to our oh next my God, piece. I love this, Gabby. Mm -hmm. This we had a version of this in navy and white last year. This is black and white stripe, Gabby stripe sweater, one hundred and thirty nine dollars. Has again the knit on the front, and it's like a cotton with embroidery on the back. Yes. Again from uh, Gabby, mm -hmm. very boho chic. This yes. little crop top with the bell sleeve mm -hmm. really looks really looks takes you back to the. 
to the hippie age, it right? Does. With jeans. All you need is a little tank underneath it, a pair of jeans, whatever, whichever one or you like. Or right? a wide leg, a white linen pant. I love the big earring with that. Yes. That little sweater is one thirty nine. Now, Belize. Mm -hmm. This is a Canadian designer. Lee Spinard, out of Montreal, been in business for many, many years, designs beautiful clothes oh, for women. The right? detail is great. Now, you just saw the graffiti side of this vest. It's a reversible vest, Marlene, so go subdued with the soft pink or with the uh, graffiti, $225. It's worn over the knit pullover with the pocket, $175. You see the little racer stripe there. On to the next piece already. It's the hybrid print jacket. Uh, graffiti again with the zipper detail on it. And wearing it all back to black, but certainly yes. could be worn with white. And I love the little dash of pink. Oh. So this is, this is the jacket you know you go shopping with on Saturday or out yes. with friends for brunch on Sunday. I like her attention to detailing mm -hmm. all around the neckline, trimmed in a little bit of the pink. So this is her first collection, which is all in this pink and black. This is a reversible puffer jacket, mm -hmm. perfect for spring, 225. And I love, she even finishes it off with the matching scarf. Matching scarf, $60. All of these pieces are online. We're just giving you a little bit of a tease of these. Now, so, same So jacket. that's reverse, that's black yeah. and now it's the pink. Very pretty. Wow, Imagine that, there are these great weekend weekend oh, wear pieces, right? Yes. You're going away for a weekend up to Laurentians or wherever down to uh, Palm Springs. Smart dressing. Yeah, it's time wow, for a it's question. Already over, right? Yeah. So International Women's Week. We want to know from you what does this week mean to you personally? Oh, and you could win fifty dollars here at Shepherd's Fashions or shepherdsfashions.com. Well, you're going to grill me this Sunday. <laughs> Welcome to Shepherd's Coffee Talk. Yeah, uh, people have been asking for it, so we're going to deliver. Marlene was so reluctant. I've been asking her since we started Coffee Talk. Can we share your story? And she's like, why would people want to hear my story? But it was other people saying it to Marlene that really made her kind of break down and say, okay, let's, I don't even know what people want to know, but I think I have some ideas. So we're going to start with, where were you in 1978? What were you up to? I know that I was... Uh, working in radio, I probably had fuchsia hair, not much of a care in the world, and you, oh, yeah. with Good your mom, yeah. decided to build a business. Well, yeah, and you know, I was in broadcasting before right, for, that's right. for about three and a half years in radio and a little bit of TV, and um, you know, it just, it wasn't my jive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I decided, you know, every girl's dream is to go to Europe for a year or travel around, and I said, you know, at what, 23, 24, that's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. So I went off to Europe and I spent a year um, working and traveling. On your own? Yes, on my own, what? yes. And I gave up a good job because oh, I was with wow. Contemporary News doing news on the hill, mm -hmm. um, worked with the Chum group, and then started to do some TV. But it, you know what I, you know what just I didn't just feel right. you, it yeah. was, yeah. you yeah. know, I said, yeah. no, this is nearly not for me, yeah. and this is an opportunity to do it. So I went to the south of France, I mean, not a bad place to go, to study French, which of course I've lost totally by Bonjour. now. Bonjour, that's okay. Bonjour, ça va bien. Je tourne de français le sud de France, dans une petite ville qu'on peut Cap Dye. Okay. 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 Cap Dye was your home. Yes, okay, that's good. neat. That's um, neat. Anyway, so traveled a year, worked there, worked in a casino as a credit officer. So, uh, and, and know that you just uh, never go into a casino unless you know you're going to lose. <laughs> if you have $20 and you want to throw it's it away, fun. take it to the casino and give it to them. Yeah. So anyway, came back after a year and wanted to sink my teeth into something mm -hmm. and noticed in Europe a lot of the ladies loved accessories. Mm -hmm. They wore the big costume jewelry, right. lots of scarves, scarves, belts. They were big believers in accessories. Mm -hmm. And at that time in Canada and North America, women were still wearing, do you remember the little gold chains, the little tiny stud earrings, mm -hmm. and that time it had to be real. Right. And of course, which is not happening in right. Europe, it right. was all right. costume jewelry. Right. So um, at that time in Ottawa, 240 Spark Street had just been built, mm -hmm. and it was anchored by Holt Renfrew, and it was just a small three-floor um, you know, a shopping center, but, but central. It, but it was yeah. the first of its kind. Yeah. There was no yeah. Rito Center, yeah. 
and it was so elegant, beautiful shops. And my mother and I sort of looked at one another and said, I think that's where, why don't we open up a kiosk there of just accessories? Why not? So that's what we did in 1978. But, but we want to share the story, uh, you know, because people think, so there's one point I want to make, just to your point about you tried broadcasting, but it wasn't for you. Because sometimes people see a person or they recognize their profile and you were Miss Ottawa Rough Rider, you had stuff going on, and people thought, oh, this person would be a great broadcaster. So we listen to other people's opinions, we try things. If it doesn't work for you, it's okay. It doesn't work for you. Find the next thing that's, that might be right for you and then the next thing until you find the right thing. So that's really brilliant and, and I wanted to way back when I was 18 I wanted to be an airline stewardess because I wanted to travel so you know look look what it ends yeah. up yeah right? exactly it always, and and be open to those changes and right? be open to and, change and, and listen exactly. to those doors those knocks at yes, the door because there's know. no no failure there is no failure um, so talk about the story about how you and your mom got the lease on the kiosk because that's interesting talks about perseverance well um, yes at 240 spark street as i say small there was maybe only about 32 stores mm -hmm. and when we went to approach and knock on the door um and it was the government it was it was um the government owned building okay. so you had to go through the government agency to see there were no vacancies at that time so we thought, well, what about a kiosk? And there weren't too many at that time. So we went knocking on the door and they said, no, not interested, not no. interested in kiosk. And without saying something like this, but we're not interested in you two because you have no experience. I don't know if it was because we were both women, but- We'll never know. We're, we're mm -hmm. not interested. So we just persevered and we said, no, no, we loved our idea. We we're going to bring in accessories and jewelry from New York, things that you've seen in magazines. And we thought it was a perfect match to the stores that were at 240 Spark Street. So we kept persisting and calling him and no avail, wasn't interested in, just would shut us down. So we said, okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to wait outside his we're gonna office. We're going to stalk him, basically. We're going to stalk him. We're going to wait outside his office at lunch hour. He's got to go for lunch, and we're going to travel down the elevator with him. And uh, we're going to keep doing this until we can convince him. And lo and behold, that's what we did. We sat, my mother and I sat outside his office. And hi, he was very surprised to see us travel down the elevator. Again, we had our pitch, 11 floors, we, we did our pitch again about trying to convince him how we were the right thing. Eventually he gave in and we opened wow. in December of 1978 our first 150 square foot kiosk wow with accessories right and you're you're working central to all the people in government downtown who could walk by you know create mm -hmm. that awareness build that brand awareness back in the day we didn't really know anything about that but that's really what you were doing you and your mom were building this foundation for what eventually became a full-blown retail store mm -hmm. um tell me what it was like working with your mom well, it was great. I mean, you know, uh, she was like, what, I was 26, she was like 56. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, we had a family hotel before, a small country hotel. So she was she was an entrepreneur, you mm -hmm. know, because she ran the hotel. I grew up, you know, making beds, serving in the restaurant, um, et cetera. So I kind of had that background also. So it, it was it was our calling to be entrepreneurs and to do it ourselves. So, so we really were the yin and the yang and it was great. I mean, we covered all the hours and in those days you weren't open on Sunday and only right. two nights a week. Right. So it was all very doable, small kiosk. Right. Um, so we had great fun. And I, I was living at home because obviously there wasn't much money. Uh, we just kept plowing it back into the business. Mm -hmm. And then after five years, Rito Center, opened mm -hmm. up which mm -hmm. was a brand new big downtown mm -hmm. um, complex and we thought we had to be there or somebody else would be right there. good point so then we went ahead with and the then you started one. to expand into clothing and but you've always had a certain je ne sais quoi about how you've done what you've done there's a, there's an elegance about the type of shopping you do to supply your customers with there's you know that inclusiveness there's that recognition of that women want to feel beautiful no matter what their age or their size and talk about that and why that's important well, to you well and you know that probably came from the yin yang with my ah, mother okay. and I probably mm -hmm. that as we would go out to buy 
we looked at a garment from two different perspectives. Ah, yes. And the thing about what we've done right from the beginning is we would always try something on. We'd always try it on to make sure it fit a woman's figure. Right. And my mother has a great, she's still, she's 96. Bless her um, heart. But you know, she used to try on a lot of the clothes mm -hmm. because even though she was five foot three, you know, not the size two model, but she was perfectly proportioned. So she was a good sort of model, model to try yeah. things on. So we could look at something and I could see it for a 25 right. year old or 35 right. year old and she could probably see it for someone a little bit more mature. So that always stayed with us. Now she retired when she was 80, which is 16 years ago. <laughs> so she was always very involved in it. Took more of a back seat, wasn't mm -hmm. in the stores mm -hmm. um, for, for many of the last years, but would still have a hand in the buying. So, Love it. Uh, so, it, so I think that um, came from uh, that selection that we have in the store comes from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And again, we still do it because we have yep. young people involved in the business now and helping to buy, again, trying to look at it. I really don't think our clothes are for the more mature figure. I think there, it really is all about a style. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, who's 23, her favorite line's Eileen Fisher. Love but it. she's going to style it up differently than yeah. you or I right, would. Right, right, right. So. One of the great tips I learned from you, and, I, and I, as you're talking about you and your mom trying the clothes, um, that idea that it's got to look good both coming and going. I love you say that. Wow, <laughs> yeah, how many you times are you looking that. when somebody goes by and they go, wow, she looks sharp or right, yeah. whatever. And I always tell customers, yeah. uh, you know, if you three-way mirrors are great, try to walk, walk away, away yeah. and walk into a mirror right. so you can see a swish. Yeah. So. Um, in the development of a business such as a retail store, which is no mean feat, I mean, the, the times are challenging no matter what area you're in, whether we're in recession or we're in full on abundance, um, there are always things you have to do to pivot. That's the thing about, about change is it, it's, it's welcome. It can be stressful, but it's welcome. And you have certainly pivoted over the years mm -hmm. to meet the needs of your customers and your business because you sometimes expand and then you sometimes have to contract a little bit. So you did go from one store to at one three, point you had three, three store in the major shopping areas mm -hmm. in Ottawa. Um, and at one time we sort of thought about franchising and going outside of Ottawa, but then I got married. <laughs> Right. I got married at 41, had my first child at 42, and a second at 44, so that kind of changed directions. And she all started of a sudden, that family started, after 40. I started, we started a little late. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never been married before, so, uh, and of course it's been absolutely amazing. Yeah. I have a beautiful son and daughter and a wonderful husband, and that just took me on another little journey, which said, okay, you know, I'm really going to just stay within Ottawa. Right. So we stayed in the centers, and then, you know, as time, as things evolve, the shopping centers were becoming less relevant. Mm -hmm. People were shopping online. Online, yeah, right. And that's what we started, I think it's four years ago, we started going online. When shopping online started, I thought, is this really a thing? Like, can you actually, yes you can, especially if you know your size in a certain brand. Mm -hmm. And because Shepherds carries certain brands, people know what works mm -hmm. for them, which is just genius. Mm -hmm. Now that's a big pivot too, because mm -hmm. now you're not only in one central location in train yards in Ottawa, but now you're all over the world mm -hmm. online. So what's that been like as you've grown that section of the business? Well, I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, it's so exciting. We have an amazing, fantastic team. Um, of all ages, and that's what I love about our business is we have we have 22 year olds up to you know 74 year olds that are involved in it, and everybody has an equal voice. Everybody participates in it. Ideas are always coming forward. We really welcome an openness. You know, there there is like no question is a bad question. Right. It's yeah. the same thing. No yeah. idea is a bad yeah. idea. Yeah, that's here at all because we sit in our in our in our you know in our boardroom and. We have, I mean, the laughter that comes out of that and the ideas are crazy, but you never know, they end up into being wonderful places. Mm -hmm. And I think the driving force to our success online and in the store um, has been the videos that we do, that where we really show women yeah. that this is how you wear this new style. If this is your body shape, this is how we can accentuate it and make it make you feel and look your best. Right. And there are little tips of the trade that we, um, 
you know, that we we share. Yeah. And I think that's what the videos have really driven our business that way. It makes it more comprehensive. And this idea of building community, which you have done so successfully, I think without even intending to do that. You know, mm -hmm. you want loyal customers, but on top of loyal customers, you've created community where people say, I know one of your customers calls Shepherds her second home, mm -hmm. her happy place. I mean, that's because when she comes in here, there's always something happy to to see and experience with the people who work here. Talk about loyalty because you have had staff who've been with you for a long time, mm -hmm. some who've left and come back. So it, it really is something about how you're doing what you're doing. Well, you know, because everybody is so valuable. Everybody has great ideas and they just have to feel safe about sharing them and that, the, that people are open to it. They're not gonna be put down or shamed or ridiculed. It's because it can lead to another. So. And I feel everybody has such value in what they have to contribute. You just need to open the door to them. And so I, I'm hopefully with this environment, when they work with us, they see they see that what they offer make, can make a difference to the company and most importantly to the customer. Right. Because when the customer comes in and has a wonderful experience, mm -hmm. obviously that's a reflection of the business. So, so their participation to when we're buying, you know, we try to get staff to try it on. In our videos, our staff are in the videos. Right, right. Um, we'll come out on the sales floor even when customers are here and we'll say, what do you think? This is for next fall. Do you like it? Do you not like right. it? So again, it's just opening up your mind and your heart mm -hmm. to diversification, right? To, mm -hmm. to different ideas. So, and it's a fun place to work. I it's mean, a fun place know, to come we, to. We, we yeah. try to keep up with the times, mm -hmm. of course, with fashion, but yeah. with getting to the customer and servicing the customer. Yes. And that's first and foremost. I mean, having been in this business 41 years in, um, in, this, in one city, you have got to react, solve problems. If there is one with a customer, solve sure. it. Sure. You know, and try to avoid any further ones. So that's always been our mantra is that the customer is number one and we just, uh, and everybody's on the same page. Yes. So we just, uh, we have to do what's best for them. It's all about serving your customer, finding what works for you and then giving that to the world. Um, I think it's really tremendous that, you know, as we've developed Coffee Talk, you and I joke about how great it is in our 60s to be learning new skills. This whole online thing, yeah, sure. the whole universe of the internet, which has created so much opportunity. I mean, on our river cruise, we had Dot and Donna, our twin friends yeah, from California. California. We had Myra from the Yukon come to join us. So, you know, it's the, the net has spread out, Marlene. And uh, Dot and Donna joke that, you know, they've never been to Shepherds, but they feel like they're part of the community. And they would love to be here at our events and experience mm -hmm. our Coffee Talk Live with us too. If they could, they would definitely be here. So, you know, I think it's really, commendable that you have stuck with something grown it shaped it pivoted with it that is the secret to success don't you think uh, absolutely you've got to react to what people are asking and listen to what they're what they're looking for and that's why these videos are so wonderful because we get a large quantity of comments yeah positive and negative but that helps us grow right but the other thing that we've done in the years that we've been in business and we talked about being part of the community as of course you have been yeah. too Kathy, yeah. with your involvement in the auto and everybody knows you you walk down the street and they all remember the great shows that you've been involved with and of course you know um the the the, the one that is very famous regional contact, regional contact. How, <laughs> how many years were you oh on that show? I, uh, the show went for almost 40 years <laughs> as a half hour weekly show and i was fortunate enough to share with joel hasen for 14 of those years that's yeah. A lot. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah yeah you yeah. knew the community yeah yeah but uh, you you need to be part of the community if definitely you're going to be in business yeah, here sure. and our fashion fundraisers have been doing that you know where we open up our store to people who want to raise money for an event mm -hmm. they charge ticket prices whatever they want our store they can use free of charge we put on a fashion show and we give 10 percent of the sales back to the organization mm -hmm. so i think we've raised over eighty thousand dollars over the last six seven years but we're opening that up to virtual fundraisers now oh cool so which i cool. think is kind of a cool idea so if you have an organization you're wanting to raise money for in your community and actually it could be anywhere in the world now right, right? yeah right 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 um and what we can do is we can put on a fashion show a virtual fashion show for your group directed to them and then if they buy online yeah say within a 48 hour period we will give 10% of those sales back to your organization 
That's so I mean, I think it's I think it's a really neat idea because you know raising money these days yes. is difficult, very challenging. Not and, everybody and wants to come out. To no, exactly. Or, and people are pulled in so many directions. Or make it ticket. easy. Yeah, make it so easy. So really, if you have an organization, all you need to do is just send out an email to your list to watch a video we have. Mm -hmm. And if they buy, we'll give you 10% of what they buy. Oh, so that is virtual, clever. Virtual fundraisers. Oh, <laughs> the always evolving Marlene Shepard. Thank you for sharing your story. There's so much we could talk about, and we'll probably come back and do it again sometime. You see, I get interested. going and I don't shut up. No, we know? love that about you. So if you have questions for Marlene, pop them in the comments below. And we wish you an absolutely beautiful day. Thanks, Marlene.